I'm Katie from the Oregon City Public Library, and today I'm going to be sharing with you the story of Hans Brinker or the Silver Skates by Mary Mapes Dodge. This story was first published in 1865. And while I'm going to get to the larger story, there is a little story within the story that I wanted to talk about. So I'm gonna read it first. Leaving the church, the boys were soon on the Grand Canal again. As they skated toward Leyden, Lambert said, I never passed through Harlem, but I think the, of the story of its little hero. Oh, do tell me about him, entreated Ben eagerly. Lambert was only too willing and related the following story. Many years ago, there lived in Harlem, one of the principal cities of Holland, a sunny-haired boy of gentle disposition. His father was a sluicer, that is, a man whose business it was to open and close the sluices, or large oaken gates, that are placed at regular distances across the entrances of the canals to regulate the amount of water that shall flow into them. One of lovely autumn afternoon, when the boy was about eight years old, he obtained his parents' consent to carry some cakes to a blind man who lived out in the country on the other side of the dike. The little fellow started on his errand with a light heart, and having spent an hour with his grateful friend, he bade him farewell and started on his homeward walk. Trudging stoutly along by the canal, he noticed how the autumn rains had swollen the waters. It was growing dark. He was still some distance from home and in a lonely ravine when he was startled by the sound of trickling water. Whence did it come? He looked up and saw a small hole in the dike through which a tiny stream was flowing. Any child in Holland will shudder at the thought of a leak in the dike. The boy understood the danger at a glance. That little hole, if the water were, water were allowed to trickle through, would soon be a large one and a terrible inundation would be the result. Quick as a flash, he saw his duty. He clambered up the heights until he reached the hole. His chubby little finger was thrust in almost before he knew it. The flowing was stopped. Ah, he thought with a chuckle of boyish delight. The angry waters must stay back now. Harlem will not be drowned while I am here. This was all very well at first, but the night was falling rapidly. Chill vapors filled the air. Our little hero began to tremble with cold and dread. He shouted loudly, he screamed, come here, come here, but no one came. The cold grew more intense. The midnight moon looked down upon that small, solitary form, sitting upon a stone halfway up the dike. His head was bent, but he was not asleep. For every now and then, one restless hand rubbed feebly the outstretched arm that seemed fastened to the dike and often the pale, tearful face turned quickly at some real or fancied sound. At daybreak, a clergyman, returning from the bedside of a sick parishioner, thought he heard groans as he walked along the top of the dike. Bending, he saw, far down on the side, a child apparently writhing with pain. In the name of wonder, child, he exclaimed, what are you doing there? I am keeping the water from running out, was the simple answer of the little hero. Tell them to come quick. It is needless to say that they did come quickly and that... The noble little fellow, interrupted Ben. Is it a true story? True, of course it is, said Lambert Kidling. I have given you the story just as mother told it to me years ago. Why, there is not a child in Holland who does not know it. And Ben, you may not think so. But that little boy represents the spirit of the whole country. Now the leak can show itself anywhere, either in its politics, honor, or public safety, but that a million fingers are ready to stop it at any cost. Now, the story of the boy with his finger in the dike is pretty famous. Um, it actually wasn't originally written by Mary Mapes Dodge. It was first traced back to actually a French story from 1948 but it was published in English as early as 1850. But Mary Mapes Dodge was definitely the one who made it a hugely popular story. And actually, if you go to the Netherlands today, you will see statues everywhere of the little boy with his finger in the dike. But the funny thing is, it's not a Dutch story, and it's not a part of their culture, and it's not a true story either. And so the statues that are there are actually just for tourists to take pictures with which I thought was really funny. 
But now should we get into the story of Hans Brinker and the Silver Skates? So the story starts with Hans, who I believe is 15 or 16, and his little sister Gretel, who I believe is 12 or 13. They live in a village about five miles away from Amsterdam, and they are very, very poor. Um, when they were little, actually exactly 10 years before the so story begins, their dad was in a terrible accident. He was working on the dikes and he fell and he was never the same again. Um, he had amnesia, sometimes he had violent outbursts, sometimes he was just confused or scared, but Hans and Gretel's mom had to spend a lot of her time taking care of him. So Hans and Gretel, instead of going to school, spent time trying to earn money to help her or helping around the house. So two important things happen around the time of the accident of their father. Number one is that a sock full of money that they had been saving for a better future disappears. No one knows where it went. And the other important thing is that the night of the accident, Hans's dad gave his wife a watch, not his watch, but a watch, and told her to keep it safe and protect it no matter what. So it's always, of course, been very important to Hans and Gretel's mom to keep it safe. So, the story begins with Hans and Gretel skating. Now, skating is hugely popular in the Netherlands, especially speed skating on ice. Um, and the story of Hans and the Silver Skates is actually what popularized speed skating in the United States. So, another fun fact. So, when the story begins, they just have skates that they made out of wood. I don't, it's incredibly difficult for them to skate on them, but they love skating so much that they do it anyway. And Hans sees the toll taking care of his father is putting on his mother, and he is determined to find help. Now, many doctors have looked at his dad over the years and have not been able to help. They said there's nothing that can be done, but Hans is determined to try it one more time. So he decides to skate to Amsterdam to try to find a doctor. And actually, on his way there, he runs into one probably the most famous and well-respected doctor in all of the Netherlands. And he agrees to help. There's something about Hans that just catches his eye and makes him care when he wouldn't have normally. So he says he has an errand to attend to, but he will come in a week and he will help Hans's father or see if he can in any case. So they are all very excited about this, of course. And then there is going to be a race, a ice skating race, and the winner gets to keep silver skates, their very own pair. And so this is also really important for Hans and Gretel because they love skating and having silver skates, of course, would mean the world to them. So they begin training for that and they actually, Hans is able to sell um, a little piece of jewelry to a kid in the village to buy um, skates for them. So um, that's all very well, but then Hans's dad takes a turn for the worse um, and he needs help right away. They don't think that he'll make it. He has a fever. He's very sick. It's bad. And the boys from the village, um, who, most of whom are pretty mean to Hans and Gretel, um, are actually going to go on a skating adventure through the canal all the way from their village um, 50 miles away to a, another city. And I'm not going to get into the details of their trip because it would take way too long, but it's great. Um, they highlight a lot of cultural artifacts about the Netherlands. Um, so definitely read, read the story if you want to hear um, about that. But Hans convinces one of the boys who's going, his name is Peter, and he's the only boy in the village who is nice to Hans. He's actually the one who bought the jewelry so he could buy his skates. Um, he agrees to try to find the doctor um, while they're on their trip and tell him to hurry um, to help his dad. Um, and then he does, he finds him. Um, the doctor comes, he is able to operate on um, their dad and remove a uh, what I think is a blood clot 
that's putting pressure on his brain. And then he's good as new. Like his memory comes back. He can't believe all the time that's passed, how big his kids are, but he is recovering and it's a miracle. Everyone's overjoyed. But of course, there is still the mystery of the money and the watch. So, and of course the race, very important, the race. So they ask the dad eventually, they of course give him time to recover, but after a few days, they ask him if he knows where the money is. And the dad says, oh yes, I didn't trust one of my friends. So I buried it um, on the side of the, the willow tree. Um, so that's where it should be. So in the middle of the night, in the middle of winter, when the ground is frozen, Hans and his mom spend the whole night digging all around the willow tree, but there's no money. Um, they don't know what happened, um, but it's not there. And then the next day, they realize they were digging around the new willow tree. The tree that the dad had been talking about was one that had been cut down. <sighs> Total brain fart moment. So... Hans digs around the trunk of the stump of the old willow tree, and there's the money! So, good thing number one. And then, they are looking at the watch and talking about it, and the doctor comes by to do a visit with the dad to see how he's healing, and he sees the watch, and he is like, how did you get that watch? And um, by this point... The dad remembers a little bit and is able to say, oh yeah, there's this boy I met who was in a hurry. He was rushing away. Um, he was fleeing the country. He said he'd done something bad. Um, but to tell his dad, if he um, sends for him, he'll come back. And that's all he can remember. He can't remember the boy's name. He can't remember where the boy was going. But then the doctor is like, oh my gosh, that's my son. That was my son that you found, and he thought that he'd actually accidentally given an overdose to a patient and killed them, and that's why he was fleeing. Um, which is terrible. <laughs> but of course, he didn't actually do anything wrong. He thought he'd given the overdose, but he didn't, so the person was perfectly fine. Um, so then, eventually, they're able to jog his memory enough to remember his name, but they can't remember where he was. Then, of course, it is the morning of the race. Oh my goodness. Hans and Gretel are both so excited. They've trained so hard. Um, of course, they're split up into different teams, a boy team and a girl team. Um, Gretel actually wins. Can you believe it? Oh my goodness. Um, and she gets the silver skates. Hans was in contention to win, but then the skate or the strap on the skate of the boy who would um, found the doctor for them, broke. And so Hans, in a gesture of friendship and gratitude, gives the boy his strap so he can continue in the race, and that boy wins, which was really great of Hans, because without that boy, who knows if his dad would even be alive or healthy. So that was a really great part of the story. But then they're looking at this, the box that this, the skates came in, and they see the initials and realize the box was made by the doctor's son and they figure out that he's in England and the doctor sends him a letter right away and he comes back, which is really great. Um, and then as the story ends, the doctor takes on Hans as his apprentice so Hans can become a doctor, which is his life dream to help people or at least try to help them, which I think is a really lovely story. So everyone ends up happy and healthy, they get the money back, and the doctor is reunited with his son, and it's wonderful. Um, if you have the time, I highly recommend reading the story. It's got lots of great details and stories of friendship and culture, and it would be a great, especially great family read. Um, and it's a, because it's in the public domain, you can find it on Google or anywhere else that public domain books are available. So thank you so much for reading with me today. I hope you enjoy the story of Hans Brinker and stay tune in next week for another fairy or folktale. Bye.